In this video, I'll show you how you can add forced navigation to my flip card effect. Okay, so I've made the decision to include uh, a basic form of this interaction um, available as a complimentary tutorial uh, to those who, uh, you know, subscribe to my YouTube channel, but also uh, to those that follow me on elearning.adobe.com. Jonathan, who had seen um, just the smaller interaction that I built where you've got a flip card that gives you the effect that the card is being flipped around and revealing more information about each item here, would like to know how you can prevent a user or prevent a learner from moving forward until they've clicked on all four flip cards here. So let's build this interaction. Just know that uh, if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one tutorials like this one, you can purchase an hour of time at my website at CaptivateTeacher.com and I'll be happy to do one-on-one -on -one Captivate instruction for you. So let's get started here. If you want to do forced navigation in Adobe Captivate, we need to keep track of which items have been clicked. And to do that, you're going to need to store a value in a tracking variable, which is a user variable, just like any other user variable. Let's set up some user variables for this slide here. So we'll go to the variables section under the project drop down menu and I'm going to click on add new. So I'm going to call this first one here slide 01 card 01 and press save. I'm going to copy this structure just so I'm making sure that each of my variables follows the same format. We'll click on add new and I'll paste this in and call it two, save, change it to three, save, change it to four, save. So now as you can see here, I have four variables that represent each one of the four cards. So let's go ahead and close this. Let's talk a little bit about the cards first of all. These are simply shapes used as buttons. I've simply created a rectangle shape. Now in this case, I fancied them up a little bit by including an image, a graphic, of this flip effect here, this rotating icon here. And that's just an image fill in the background of my shape that you can do something similar on your own. For those of you who are members of my YouTube channel, you'll be able to download this uh, interaction and you'll have access to that image as well. Now, when I set these up to use as a button, uh, it automatically creates a rollover and a down state. I actually don't need a rollover and down state for this interaction, so I deleted those, but I did create my own state called flipped for each one of the cards. And I simply put some generic text here. You can replace this with whatever information your flip to reveal is going to display for each of the cards, but we can exit from that there. Also, what we have is a an icon that represents go to next slide. And I've labeled that S01 underscore next. And it's a really good idea to label your objects. It makes it so much easier when you're looking for those objects later when you're writing advanced actions. And I've done something similar with all the flip cards. You can see it's S01 card 01, S01 card 02. A uh, little bit different label than the variables, but uh, similar enough that we'll be able to recognize them. And of course, the other thing about this next button is right now it's set to be not visible in output. If I click this again and remove the slash through the eyeball, it is visible in output, but we want to start off with it not visible in output. And that's what we've done here. So let's write our first advanced action for flip card one here. So we'll go into the project drop down menu, select advanced actions, and we will call this slide zero one card zero one, so that it relates to obviously card one. And we're gonna do a number of things here. The first thing we need to do uh, in this example, if I was going to have audio play in each of these cards, I'd want to stop any other triggered audio that was playing. So 
There is an action for that, stop triggered audio, and that's the first thing that I'm going to select. Now, I want to assign the variable that is associated with this flip card a value of one. Essentially, we're keeping track of the fact that that button's been pressed. So I'm going to choose the assign action, and there's my variable, S01 card 01, and we're going to give it a literal value of one. Right, it was zero, now it's one. The next thing we're gonna do, remember, we wanna create the effect that this card is being flipped around. So the first thing we need to do is we need to apply an exit effect. And I know that seems kind of odd to do that at a beginning of an interaction, but we're taking the front of the card away. So we're going to use the apply effect action with card one and we're going to choose the exit effect. And in this case, we're going to choose collapse across. This will look like it's the sides are coming into the middle. Default values for the parameters of this are probably too long for this to um, you know, look nice and natural here. So I'm going to set this to be 0.3 seconds. And if you like, you can add the ease effect. I don't find it makes a big difference, but I'm going to increase that to 100% and we'll see how that looks. Click OK. So now we've got the collapse effect. For the collapse effect to be seen, we need to delay the next action by the same 0.3 seconds. Uh, otherwise, it'll go by so quickly you won't see the effect. So we're going to choose delay next actions by and choose 0.3 seconds. Now we want to change the state of this object here. And there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can simply change state of front of card to back of card. But if you want people to keep continually clicking it, uh, which I kind of like the idea of doing, you can simply use the go to next state function. So that will be here. And we'll choose which card. Finally, we need to apply the effect to have that second state or that additional state come into full view because remember we collapsed it down to basically nothing and now we want to use the entrance effect for the other state here. So we're going to apply effect once more and we're going to choose the card of course. In this case it's an entrance effect and the one we're choosing in this case here is the opposite of collapse across, which happens to be stretch across. We're gonna set it up to do the same thing as before, a duration of 0.3 seconds, because two seconds is too long. And I'm just gonna increase this ease in effect to 100%. We'll see how that works. Click on OK. Now, if you were going to play some audio every time someone clicks one of these cards, you could add that here as well. So you would choose Play audio. I currently don't have any audio for this, so let's assume that I've selected some audio. And the stop triggered audio that we did up at the top here would stop any other flip cards from playing their audio if someone was prematurely clicking the next card before that was done. I'm just going to delete this action here uh, by clicking on the remove icon, and we'll leave it as is. Now, the second thing we need to do is to check every time we click one of these, we want to check if all four of them have been clicked. The easiest way to do that is to add a conditional advanced action on the second decision tab. Let's give this first one a name. We'll call this flipped. And in the second one, we'll call this check for completion check. And in this one here, we're going to choose conditional. And we're simply going to say if our variable for each one of these flip cards is already equal to the value of one. Let's just copy this and paste that in there and change this to two. And we'll paste it again and change that to the third one. And paste it once more for the fourth one. There we go. So if all of them have been clicked, we're simply going to 
show our next button. That's it. So I'm going to save this as an action. Click OK. And you might be thinking to yourself right about now, well, that was a lot of steps for one little tiny flip card. I need to now do this three more times. The good news is, is that you can use the duplicate action function up here to make an exact copy of the advanced action for flip card one. And we just need to make a couple small changes. So let's duplicate this. I'm going to change the action name to slide 01 card 02. We're still going to stop triggered audio. We're going to now assign the variable for flip card 2. Still going to apply an effect, but to a different card now. Let's just double check that everything is the same. Yeah, it is. Still going to delay next action. Still going to go to the next state, but again to a different card. And we're going to apply that entrance effect to have it flip to the other side, like so. That's it. I don't need to change anything on the second tab because that's going to remain the same for all four advanced actions. So we update that action, click OK, and let's duplicate it once more. So here we have slide 01, card 03. Again, we'll just change which variable we're assigning. And we'll do the same thing as to which object we're working with here. A little, little pro tip here. I'm double clicking on these and then simply typing in the, the unique part of that object name or variable name to find it quickly. So there's the third one done. Update action. Click OK. Let's duplicate it once more. And we'll call this one four. And again, we'll just quickly update which variable we're assigning that value to and which cards we're flipping around. And that's it. Let's update this action. Click OK. Click Close. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set the action for this object and the other three to execute advanced actions. S01 card 01. We'll make this one number two. And the same thing for three and four here. There we go. I've done a couple of other little things here, like set up the hand cursor to change the appearance of your mouse cursor when you roll over uh, these interactive objects. And I've also disabled the click sound. Now, if you're going to have slide audio as well, and you don't want the audio of your flip cards to interfere or to have crosstalk uh, with that, you can select each of your flip cards, go to the options tab, and make sure that stop slide audio is selected and that will stop any slide audio from continuing to play if a user prematurely isn't waiting for the instructions and starts clicking on these flip cards. So I've done that already in this case here. Now, the one thing to keep in mind when you've got a hidden next button is you're probably going to want to hide the built-in play bar because obviously that would be a way to get around this interaction. So let's go into the project drop down menu, go into skin editor, and let's make sure those playback controls are turned off so that users can only press our next button uh, once it's available here. In fact, I'm going to turn off all of those settings here. And I think we're now good to preview this project. So let's go into preview HTML5 in browser. So here we go. Here's our, our front of cards uh, for all of four of our flip cards. Let's press the first one. There we now have the back of the card. And I can keep pressing this and just keep rotating it indefinitely. Of course, I'll hear the narration that would be assigned to this uh, flip card. And uh, we can just keep doing this forever until all four have been pressed. And once that's done, we'll get our next button. 
and can continue with the rest of the project. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.